Dang it, woman, you are upside down again. <laughs> Hold on, I'll help you out with this. And I'm walking with you right now. Watch this one. God takes our heart out and ponders it. Think of the almighty God studying your heart. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Proverbs 21, 2. The scripture says, If thou sayest, Behold, we know it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth he not know it, and shall not he render to every man according to his works? He knows your heart. He studies it. You can't fool him. You can't hide. He knows all the secrets. How do you stand before God? Is your heart right with God? Then the Bible says he weighs the heart and tries the heart. What do you mean he weighs the heart? Well, he weighs your heart by the Ten Commandments. He weighs it by the Sermon on the Mount. He weighs it by the great law that we just read. He weighs it by the life of Christ. He weighs it by the teachings of Scripture on the way we ought to live. He weighs your heart. How much do you weigh? But there's something else. All the way through the scriptures, we read about the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, don't you think that the scriptures have too much about blood? Some have called it a slaughterhouse religion. There is a lot about blood in the scriptures. But the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. If Jesus Christ had not died on that cross and shed his blood for you, there's no way you could be forgiven of your sins. It means that his heart bled, and it is only through the cleansing of that blood that we can be forgiven. And then the Bible says that God prepares the heart by the Holy Spirit. He prepares your heart. Your heart's already been prepared for this meeting tonight. He prepares by the many experiences in your life. The Bible says the preparations of the heart in man are from the Lord. Many of the experiences that you thought were terrible were, was God preparing you. The Bible says he opens the heart. Acts 16, 14, whose heart the Lord opened How wonderful for God to prepare the heart, then open the heart, then he enlightens the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Without the enlightenment, the opening and preparation by the Holy Spirit, no one could receive Christ. You see, salvation is of the Lord. We receive, but it's all of God. He's the one that gave his son on the cross. He's the one that sent the Holy Spirit to convict you. He's the one that made it possible for you to come here tonight so that you can receive him into your heart. And the Bible says that he gives a new heart. God says an old heart will not do. You have to have a new one. And God doesn't just patch you up. A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. God says, a new heart is what you need. What about you? Have you received this new heart from God? You say, now Billy, I have been baptized. I've been confirmed. And I, I try to live a good life. I don't succeed, but I try. And I try to get to Sunday school once in a while, and I go to church, or I watch on television some church service. And we think that's enough. But it's not enough. Oh, yes, you may be born again at the moment of confirmation. But many of you need to reconfirm your confirmation vow. You need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I haven't kept those vows. I want to reconfirm them. I want to rededicate my life to what I promised at confirmation or what was promised for me at baptism. Many people like that, thousands of people, whether you're what denomination, it makes no difference. A little Sunday school girl was asked which of the Beatitudes she would rather be like. She said, pure in heart. 
They asked why. She said, because I could obtain a pure heart, I would possess all the other good qualities spoken of in this chapter. If your heart's right, the rest of you is going to be right too. Ah, woman. from above he cannot see the kingdom of heaven how do you receive it first you must repent of sin you have to say to god oh lord i'm i've sinned i'm sorry i'm willing to change my way of living that's repentance i'm willing notice you can't do it yourself god has to help you even in the repenting <sighs> and in 2022 how the mighty have fallen from the original message and I was really um, well the law is fulfilled but I wanted people to still understand the gift of salvation. And if they didn't know the law, then they couldn't fully experience how loved you actually are by the death on the cross. You take that all out of the picture when you're talking about chosen ones and all of these things. <clears throat> so a lot of times what I'll do when I sit down with people is I will um, start speaking and if I say something, but my memory says, wait a second, this is the truth, then I automatically know there's falseness in that person. So uh, walking with my wife and doing the things she does is what I've done for nine years now. I had told her, these familiar spirits are like killer whales, babe. They'll flip you upside down. And what I mean by that is you're doing everything backwards. So <clears throat> setting everything right is what I'm doing in your life, babe. Like I always have. But I don't have to reveal everything. And sometimes it's wiser for me not to do that. It keeps you from um, being anxious about things that happen behind the scenes that you don't always need to know. You just need to know you're in good hands. I love you. <laughs>